Okay, so we're live and we have, oh, two thumbs up already. On a video and make me wish my karma could sustain art piece much too cold for me. Yeah, wrong. Well, maybe you could grow some icicles. Um, let me know if the sound is okay, because this is all experimental and I'm using these to reduce, well, apparently there's a bit of echo in this room. So, yeah, let me know if you can hear me, okay? And again, we're up the past three times, so how many of you are there here? Oh, it's had an update, isn't it? Uh, I can't tell right now. All right, three, oh, it's three live ones, four thumbs up, excellent. Can you hear me okay? Sound okay? Somebody ping me a little comment. I'm uh, just talking to myself silently. <laughs> no? Fair here. Okay, maybe there's a delay. That's possible. The uh, hail curve and the slant is your fair bear. Okay, somebody let me know if you can hear me, okay? Sound is good. Oh, perfect, Jordan. Welcome. All right. So we've already got 12, like the apostles. We can begin. <laughs> Hail from Dixieland. Grand Inquisitor. Dixieland is good. All right. So the title of tonight's thing is Communism by Another Name. And as I was doing the relaxing task of hacking things to death, mostly olive trees, Snipping off a lot of little heads, you know, from uh, from the trees. I came up with this idea that actually communism did not start in Russia. Communism started with guess who? That's right, a German, another German, as you think. Communism started with Karl Marx, but it didn't. It actually started with Martin Luther. Think about it. What is communism? Communism is a revolution in theory for the benefit of the poor peasants uh, who are being oppressed by the so-called elite or, you know, people who can read and shit. And uh, what exactly was the Reformation? Same shit, right? Supposedly, a revolution, supposedly, to get rid of the elite that were oppressing the poor people and to give power to the masses. Now, the masses are invariably idiots. So, oh, and the other thing, commonality that they have is, of course, it always results in millions of deaths, bloodshed, and of course the Reformation, the so-called Reformation, you know, the satanic introduction of secular, the secularization of Christianity known as Protestantism, of course resulted in wars, deaths, etc. All supposedly to benefit the common man. Now, as Rodney Stark, that eminent historian, who is not a Catholic, by the way, but he is honest, um, has clearly identified the differences in doctrine were not even understood by any of the people involved. And uh, sound is a bit faint. Okay, maybe I just need to speak louder. Let's see. Um, kids are asleep and uh, next door, really. So I'm probably not speaking very loud. Um, boost it to the, to the limit and let me know if you can hear me. Anyway, the point was that essentially Protestantism was really the first version of communism. And Karl Marx just did it with economics instead of spirituality. Um, and now we are at the cultural, um, the cultural version of communism. Cultural Marxism is the same thing as, you know, 
Will you produce a sensual body oils from your olive trees? <laughs> it's very good. Lots of buffering too, maybe on my end. It could be the uh, the internet connection here is not, uh, yeah, it's not the what it was in central London, but um, hopefully it works and uh, you can still hear and see what's going on. As you can tell, uh, that's why I dropped off. Hopefully this is still uh, recaptured. Over time, maybe this will improve. Um, like I said, this is a bit of a test run. But yeah, I was talking about the little... This being automatically lowered because the internet connection was not fast enough. Okay, so you might not see my pretty face in full Technicolor. But hopefully, I'm back on there. And 21 of you. Like a few of you dropped off. 19. I don't know. I don't know if you're still there or not. It looks like you are and yeah the, the trip here was quite oh, 15 I'm guessing you guys are still at the uh, dead internet bit if what 12 so the numbers are dropping rapidly I don't know if this is uh, is working or not so 10 if one of you is still there and seeing this just let me know in the, a message or something Well, oh, two came back, the apostles. Still there, but streams intermittent. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll see. Uh, I've got an IT guy around here that will uh, hopefully help me, you know, whatever, lower the quality or improve something else. The, um, the internet here is not bad, but uh, it's not particularly geared up for, um, for live streaming because obviously quite out in the sticks. We persevere for the destruction of communism and Protestantism. <laughs> Chop wood, carry water. Very good. Uh, that looks like an avatar of the X-Men evil woman. That's pretty cool. Actually, I like her. Domino, is it? Can't remember. Still working. Excellent. Thank you, Henry. Uh, so, yeah. So, the little mini Kurgan slash Viking, we had a, basically a three-day trip to get here from Prison Island, UK, uh, which we escaped, you know, by skin of our teeth. <laughs> and um, the last day was a hard, hard drive, of which I must say my wife had the hardest part of it because her car had three kids in it. And um, really, I was just sort of leading the way, but, um, you know, she had the harder task. After 15 hours of car, you know, we'd stop to eat and stuff, but it was 15 hours. We stopped to give the kids a bit of a break. You know, keep in mind that one of them is still breastfeeding. And, you know, the other one, the little Viking is not even two years old, and the other one's about five and a half or so. So we stopped to give them a little break at like a highway sort of rest stop type place where, you know, you've got like restaurants and stuff and you could sort of sit down and have something to eat and so we got them some little toys a bit of chocolate a bit of a treat you know just to give them a break well after about five minutes the little viking was like car car <laughs> he loves the car and he likes to travel and he's exploring everywhere i've basically got to look at you know keep an eye out for him because uh, about a day or two ago he got up real early and i thought okay everybody else is still asleep it was just me and him who went out, I had the shears and stuff to trim the olive trees because there was a shitload of them. And, but he was like, looked at me and he was obviously thinking, yeah, dad, let's burn the shit out of me. So he picked up a little stick, made a little club out of it, whacked some weeds and shit, and then he just wandered off. <laughs> and like, he doesn't wander off down, you know, the clean little garden path or anything. Nah, he wanders off into the, thick brambles and forest and I gotta say he like you know sneaks his way through and stuff without getting stabbed <laughs> but he gets up in places where I'm like damn he's by the edge of a cliff yeah, notice my uh, Kurgan fashion you know brilliant and um, so he's hilarious I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time with him he's 
it's cracking me up all the time. And uh, I, uh, I don't think I, I did take a video of it, so maybe I'll save that one for next. But my trusty henchman and I were uh, halfway stuck up a cliff. Was it yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Because we went looking for um, a grotto that supposedly had a bomb shelter in there. And to try and find it, we were halfway up a cliff near, near this area. It was just, and you know, it started out with like, oh, that sounds interesting. We might go look for a bomb shelter. Yeah, that would be cool. It'd just be a nice little five minute walk. And like two hours later, like hanging onto roots for dear life, <laughs> finding our way down this escarpment. You know, it was just, it was funny. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of what we've been uh, what we've been doing for a while. Chat delay seems a couple of minutes behind. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the apparently the software automatically lowered the um, the quality of the stream to make the, the upload better. So I hope that's at least watchable. Put it that way. Dan in Georgia. After the death of Michael Corleone, I hear there's an opportunity in the market for olive oil producers <laughs> and shippers. He was talking something. Okay, uh, Gavrel, maybe I missed a comment. I don't know what you're talking about. And shippers, he was talking about. No. Okay, I think I must have missed a comment some somewhere. Because Gavron just says and shippers. I don't know what that refers to. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry about the couple of minutes of delay. But, um, you know, fire your questions away. I'll, I'll wait a little bit. It's not going to be a long one. Uh, oh, that was about eight minutes. There's another seven minutes. Hopefully it's still all on the one stream. Because I did say resume rather than start a new one. I've only been here about 15 minutes, but it's, it's been a long day. And you might see a couple of thorn stabs in my head and stuff. That one, my trusty henchman, because, you know, a bit of a thorn in my head. But it's all good. It's all good. I have the best henchman. Everybody say so. Okay. 24 of you. Pretty good considering I haven't done Jack for a couple of weeks or so. But I'm now back and I, I do plan to actually stream even more regularly. Uh, you know, internet and buffering and all that permitting. Um, Finchman, is Zenostart already training with you? <laughs> no, no, he's not. But I, I obviously would give away the anonymity of my henchmen. There are, there are several. Um, what are your orders, General? <laughs> well, build Catholic communities wherever you are. If you can't get to where I am, get where you are and build one. Remember that you have to be the leader that you want to find in the world. Oh. Well, tiredness has kind of hit me. It's been very long, hard days. Usually end up going to bed only about 1 or 2 a.m. And the little dude comes and wakes me up, usually around 7. So, And there's usually an interruption in the middle of the night, too. Um, so that's about it for me today. Unless you've got some questions, I'll wait a minute or two just to give the stream a chance to catch you up. And uh, I'm very impressed that there's a uh, 26 of you after a two-week hiatus. So it's very good of you guys to, uh, you know, to be so um, loyal. Ooh. Oh, pardon me. Um, there's been a little bit of tiny flame wars going on on Social Galactic. Is there an online true mass for those of us who live hundreds of miles away? 
I believe there is, uh, I don't have my phone here. I think it's called Don Floriano. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but I'm sure if you find one, there probably is. Godfather reference. Yes, of course, uh, Diana was quite aware of the Godfather reference. Mike Corleone, however, was a Sicilian. And that's a bit way further south than where I'm at. So, how many serfs will you need to farm your new fiefdom? As many as I can get. It's uh, it's going to be a large and expanding fiefdom because I'm not alone here, and there's uh, a few other people. That are gonna join me They're in the process of buying property all around me. So it's gonna be a uh, interesting time. See, uh, Vox is very good at creating um, online zeitgeist changes. I have taken another tack. I'm basically gonna slowly and quietly build up a meat space community of actual proper Catholics um, and we all help each other out and I gotta tell you the, uh, the guys that are here and the, the guys that are on the way here whew, they're really an awesome bunch of people uh, super helpful and you know even, even everybody in this area actually has they, they still reference God you know they might be Novos Orco they don't necessarily know the whole thing but the neighbors have been super helpful because we arrived. If we had literally been 15 minutes later, because we only arrived at 8 o'clock at night after having set off at like 4 in the morning. Um, you know, getting up at 3 to set off at 4 in the morning, that was the last day. And we got here just at 8, literally on the dot. And um, if we had been another 15 minutes late, we would not have been able to get our place and we would have been stuck for a couple of days as it was we got here and then we're stuck here for a couple of days because of the snow um, you know northern Italy has some pretty quick snow falls sometimes and you just gotta roll with the punches shall we FedEx into you no I you know Xander start is, is a cool dude he's uh, he's gonna do what he's gonna do you know he, he might well start a Catholic community where, where he's at. I don't know. It's uh, <coughs> what is your no Ben Evans says? What is your knowledge opinion of the economics of distributism? Um, it's not as good as I would like it to be, but from what I've read of it, distributism is probably the best economic um, situation, and, and it is a Catholic. Uh, thing. Uh, G.K. Chesterton talks about it. I have skimmed the argument and the, and the concepts of it. From what I read of it, I think it's possibly the most sustainable and good economic system to, you know, to use. Um, Catholic uh, concept of economics. Slightly expecting a postcard comment. It is a postcard comment because I am not 100% familiar with it. I understand the baseline concepts. And in my opinion, uh, based on those baseline concepts, I think distributism is the pinnacle of human economics. And I, I thank you for your hail, Ben. David Perkins says, has the surrounding countryside been properly subjugated and how long until the Vatican issues an official statement condemning the carnage? <laughs> oh, I think it'll be a while because uh, like banks, the Vatican doesn't want people to know what's really going on. Now that the Sicilians are bumped off, an opportunity for Venetians. You know, Venetians and Sicilians actually get on pretty fine because the Sicilians have always had their Sicily and the Venetians have always had, 
you know, whatever they wanted, pretty much. Um, I actually get on with Sicilians. For the most part, I've uh, never really had any problems with Sicilians. You know, a couple of them are dodgy fuckers, but that's true of any of any people. Whew. LS16 says to um, Gabriel that Most Holy Trinity runs a live stream. Just need to check my time. And Henry comes and says, do you move in time to enjoy any snow in the mountain? Yeah, but yeah, we had snow. We definitely had snow. Back here says, I like your recent videos from the farm. They show how you put your ideas into practice. Very good. Yeah. Um, I think a few of the gammas from uh, Reddit would be, will be disappointed because the last time I had looked on there, which was when I was still in England, there was um, one of the, uh, you know, gay, he's the gay guy there, I think obsessed gay guy and he was saying like oh you're a, you you call yourself a nationalist but you don't live in your own country blah 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 so i guess he's got one less little criticism but um, that's it is what it is woolly ram hello good evening current and assorted mortals how life away from soggy brown island good good very good uh, escaping Prison Island, UK was was another really good move. And you can see now why I, why I was busy and um, for a while because this this you know it's not a simple thing to do, especially with three little kids and a bunch of stuff that has to go from one country to another during the whole COVID thing and blah blah blah. And you guys all greeting each other. See that. Pause, go on pre plan place. Oh, I see that. Pause, go on pre plan place. Encampments are raised just in time for later Vatican siege and purge. Indeed. Lack of proximity helps. Uh, it does. It, it indeed does. Venetians and Sicilians get on very well because they're the opposite ends of the peninsula and there's also a bit of water in between. Chop wood carry water says lack of Catholic community in Podunk, Missouri means we are creating our own. Child number five on the way. Great times. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. And yeah, you have to create your own. You know, when I say Catholic community, I mean Catholic. I don't mean Novus Orco. I don't mean, you know, oh, nominal Catholic. I mean actual Catholic. And, uh, you know, you, you, you do have to keep in mind that uh, occasionally even the random pagans like Gandhi were right when he said you have to be the change you want to see in the world. Well, you want strong Catholic leaders, you better become one. So that's really where it's at. Um, I have, of course, to learn everything about any kind of farming because I'm I'm no farmer, never been, never will be really, but, you know, it's not fucking rocket science. Um, you do learn pretty early on that your hands are going to end up looking like mace meat within a week. And uh, <laughs> the trusty henchman nearly lost a finger on the shears while we were up the cliff because it was just funny. You know, we, we, he had uh, he had the shears to sort of clear a path for the from the the thorns. There's, there's like a lot of thorn bushes. Uh, I suppose you call them brambles, yeah. which also got me in England because the trip to the to the ferries to get out was just you know that that was brutal that day. I'll tell you that story another time. It tires me out just to think about it. Uh, Michael Pecker says, little does he know, but the Kurgan had just founded the capital of the intergalactic empire. Indeed, I do know. I do think ahead. I'm sort of wondering, a few hundred years from now, whether they'll have statues to me on other planets, particularly on Mars. <laughs> Be able to work all job remote from Italy? Not yet, no. Uh, I haven't really made much of an effort. 
um, to do that, just been really busy. But yeah, that is possibly an alternative. Um, and I wouldn't need to do it full time. I just need to do it you know, a few days a month. It would definitely cover all our bills. You know, of course, we, we own this place now, so there's no rent to pay here. Um, I've got a little bit of money saved up, so we probably have enough money to make us survive a few months a year, maybe, if we stretch it and like watch what we're doing. Um, so hopefully by then, mm. oh. pardon me. It really is long days here, so you know, hopefully we'll all well work out. Do the kids already speak Italian? Well, a uh, little Viking dude understands it, uh, speaks the odd word here and there, but then he speaks the odd word here and there and everything, because uh, I gotta say, my little dude is very much a boy. Uh, you know, he globalizes things. So it's like, dad, mom, this, pointing at it, more, car, because he likes the car. Oh, and today, today cracked me up. So we went to the shop to buy, like, you know, the, the choppers and the automated tools and whatever. And uh, I was basically holding him the whole time when it came time to pay. The loyal henchman was there and um, he, like, grabbed his wallet. He's like, what are you doing? Just give the wallet back. And he was like, no, money. And it's like... I have never heard him say that word. We don't really talk about money, you know, it's not a word we use. But he knows, you know, he, he knows a lot more than you think. And money! And then he quickly opened it and pulled out the first coin that looked like gold. You know, it's not gold, it's, you know, the, the European money is like, the cents look like gold. Money! Ha ha! And then he was like, ha ha, money! <laughs> so he went straight for, straight for the doubloon. He's definitely got Viking genes in there. He's just a raider, but he wants to explore and raid. You know, it's just his thing. And what, how he tests things in life is to destroy. If he can stand up to his destruction, then it's worth having. If not, it didn't matter. You know, it's just. Is France going as hardcore in England on the COVID restrictions? No idea. We drove through the whole of France. No one even bothered to ask us whether we had passports. Never mind, look at them. So, you know, you, you gotta you gotta understand the media is just talking shit all the time, you know. It's not as bad as they, they make out. It's just trying it's scaring people into submission. You know, like like I said before, in England there's hundred and twenty five thousand police. There's 8 million able-bodied men between the age of 22 and 45. Who gives a shit what the police want to enforce? You know, if 10% of those men had a pair of balls, there would be no lockdown, there would be none of that shit going on. But again, you need some men with their own testicles attached, not bought in a store and grafted on. MD says, uh, best... Of luck with the big move and God bless. Thank you very much. I'm seeing 11. Does Box have epic man hugs coming his way now you're in northern Italy? Well, um, I didn't get a chance to um, stop over to see Vox on the way or any of my family actually because it was, like I said, it was a pretty brutal trip. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to do that. Um, but at some point, you know, when things settle down, I've got a lot of work to do here. Oh, you know, between the house, the fields, there's paperwork, it's just relentless. So it'll be a while before I, um, uh, I'm sort of all chilled out and, and I've got a lot of leisure time, but hopefully that's, that's the idea. Briar patch, indeed. Woolly Ram, does the Italian government try to milk property owners with taxes and excises? Oh, the Italian government will milk you dead for anything. Like, uh, the taxes in Italy are disgusting if you're, if you're working as a, you know, as a worker or whatever. Roughly between that and every other shit, you pay like 70% tax. Also, there is no 
minimum wage, you know, like in England, if you're below a certain threshold, you don't pay any tax. It's like 0%, then 20%, then 40%, something like that. In Italy, it's pretty much a flat rate for, for everybody. Even, even if you earn like three grand a year, you still get taxed on that. So they're, they are definitely, you know, they're not, they're not nice people, the tax guys. You know. Jerome Hogan, Lord Kurgan, they have infiltrated the ancient Rome of the North, AKA's Hertogen Bosch in the Netherlands, the Saint John John, has a huge Illuminati eye in the middle of the ceiling looking down. Well, to be fair, the Netherlands is a Protestant country, so they were always pretty much never there. Danny, Georgia, you drove there, impressive. Yeah, drove from London to Northern Italy uh, through France. And um, you know what was impressive was not me driving. What was impressive was my wife. Because she did it with three kids in the car, occasionally screaming <laughs> at one point. Because <laughs> the kids had like iPads to try and keep them a little bit entertained. And they've learned how to like record audios and stuff. And at one point she goes, oh my God, I think I better go through that iPad and delete <laughs> the audios because there was a moment in there that I was screaming at them because the little dude was taking his seatbelt off. The other one was trying to tie him down, but then she was spreading like chocolate or something or milk or I don't know what all over the, the place. They had muddy shoes and so I just lost my shit and I was screaming at them and then like I pulled off the iPad off them because I thought now you're going to get punished if you're not listening this is all why I was trying and so then I saw like when we stopped like oh that's all been recorded I don't know what you <laughs> I don't know I haven't heard it yet but she said oh no, no I'm, a, I'm ashamed to hear it I don't know I don't know it was it was bad <laughs> you know but this is after over 10 hours of driving with three kids, you know, plus we had to stop to do the, the breastfeeding and stuff. Nah, nah, nah. She is, she is awesome. They're actually, I was, I was very impressed with her. She is, um, I don't think, there's, and plus when we got here, the shit that we found here and the fucking getting locked in with the snow, there was no sink in the kitchen. We had no cooker. It was just, it's, it's been pretty drastic. Um, for a few days now um, so we've been here like I think second week now or something but um, it was pretty tough to begin with and uh, she just took it in stride no no I have to say I definitely got the right